Harley Quinn is notorious for breaking rules, testing limits, causing mayhem, getting some laughs in the process, so it's only fitting that her animated series would do all the above and then some. Season 3 kicks off next week on HBO Max, and here to tease a little bit of what's in store for Harley, Ivy, and company are executive producers Patrick Schumacher and Justin Halpern. Boys, welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming it. by. So, I don't know how to pussyfoot around this. Uh, you guys got in some... Uh, there was some buzz around it. There was a certain romantic act that you were told you could not have Batman doing on yeah. this show. Yeah. I don't know if this is a family show or what, but I feel like people watching can probably figure out what we're talking about. Is there anything like that that you weren't allowed to put in here? Is there any stuff that was cut or sort of frowned upon, or was there anything you particularly had to fight for? Uh, well, there was one thing we pulled out because we were like, maybe this goes too far. Oh boy. Uh, in the season, there's a, uh, they're making a biopic of Thomas Wayne, uh, Bruce Wayne's dad, who is murdered. We've seen him murdered a thousand times in popular culture. Anyway, Bruce goes to the premiere of the movie, oh and uh, you know how like at the arc light they have like the costumes in the glass cases, and there was a scene we had where Bruce is looking at the costume for little Bruce Wayne, and it has piss stains oh on it my God. because he pisses his pants when his his okay. parents are murdered All in right. front of them, and Bruce is like, "That's not what happened." They usually zoom in on the pearls falling. So that's, yeah, 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 and then and then on screen when. In the movie, when he's watching it, little Bruce's parents die, and then he just keeps pissing himself. Okay. Uh, and we said maybe that was too far. Okay. So we maybe we'll get like an extended four-hour piss cut or something. Yes, the piss cut. Release, yeah. release, release the piss release cut. Release the piss cut. Uh, that is awesome. Uh, now, you guys, I feel like are kind of almost like neck and neck with James Gunn for how completely bonkers you're allowed to get with you know, known quantity IP DC characters. And then you went ahead and put James Gunn on the show, which is kind of like, I feel yeah. like you're... You're kind of ahead there. Are there any kind of like pie in the sky characters or people you'd want to play them that you, you know, you just want to throw out there to kind of, you know, will them into existence maybe? Man, I, I, in terms of like pie in the sky with like DC characters, I, we've already been given the keys to the kingdom. But if we were talking about like meta jokes and whatnot, um, I'd probably want to get like uh, Chris Nolan in there at some point. <laughs> um, he seems like a funny dude. <laughs> Yeah, it seems sure, hilarious. Yeah. You can have him like record his lines on a cell phone, just you know, to really go fully that meta. That he doesn't own. There we go. Yeah. No, well, I love it. He hates chairs and he hates cell phones. Yeah. yeah. Get him. Get him to do it in like Bermuda shorts too, because he's got to be wearing a suit for everything. But still a vest. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just like a like you know a weatherman. You know, basketball yeah. shorts the waist down. Yes. Uh, that's. I mean, that's cool. Is there any any sort of guests or characters you're especially excited about for season three? You want to tease? Mm, yeah. Or reveal. Well, Nightwing's a huge one. That's not a reveal. That's that's been out there, but. Harvey Guillen from What We Do in the Shadows voices him. He's fantastic. Um, and his whole arc deals with him trying to find his place back in the Bat Family, having returned to Gotham from Bloodhaven, and now Batgirl's in the Bat Family, and he's like, who the hell is this? Taking my corner of the cave. Um, Swamp Thing, voiced by uh, Sam Richardson, is a big one. Uh, we've got Griffin Newman as uh, Matt Hatter. Uh, we have Billy Bob Thornton as Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, so it's a stretch. Uh, he's playing Thomas Wayne in the Thomas Wayne biopic directed by James Gunn. Um, who else do we have? Uh, oh, uh, Music Meister, Larry Owens uh, from Search Party and Abbott Elementary is, uh, is Music Meister. Um, yeah, we've got, we've got a, a murderer's row of guest stars this I year. I love it. You guys are having some fun here. Uh, now, obviously, sort of one of Harley Quinn's, you know, defining traits is she's frequently like, you know, she's been broken up from the Joker. Like, that's kind of a almost a mechanic to her character. And now yeah. she's like romantically involved with Poison Ivy. Like, they're they're officially a thing. Oh, yeah. That's happening. How does that change your approach to writing her as a character? Well, I think part of it is that we want uh, to, like, push Harley to sort of test the limits of what she knows about herself, right? Like, she was in this shit relationship with the Joker. She has all these really bad habits from that relationship. And now she's in a good relationship, but she still has all these bad habits, which sometimes happens when you're in a terrible relationship for a really long time. And so for us, it was like, it's fun to write her kind of like consistently feeling like she's on her heels, which is something that Harley Quinn never really feels, but yeah. because it's a relationship she actually gives a shit about, she's got to sort of figure it out. And okay. feeling weirdly insecure about being in a healthy relationship. Yeah. It's new yeah. territory for her. And how's Ivy doing? Like what's sort of, I feel like she's definitely the more grounded one in this relationship. We definitely dial up her social anxiety uh, <laughs> this season. I mean, she's a character who hates all humans, and like what we said before is like you know traditionally in the comics she's kind of like overly sexualized, and she's like you know trying to like get get things that she wants via her like you know 
sexuality, and we sort of don't go that way with Ivy. We like this sort of like, we figure if you hate all humans, you're also probably not great at parties. And so <laughs> that's uh, kind of the way we take her in this season is we, you know, this season's about kind of what she wants. And when she's in the lead of something and people are, she's responsible for people, that's a position that really puts, you know, dials up her anxiety. And that's kind of where we want to take it for comedy. Nice. Now she, uh, spoilers, I guess, she left Kite Man at the altar. Sure. Is he going to become sort of a villainous character or is... Well, Great question. We, that was talked about in the writer's room for sure. And we thought maybe uh, turning Kite Man like into a bitter incel would be like uh, the expected way to go. <laughs> so Kite Man's, the Kite Man's doing well. The Kite Man has moved on. Uh, he shows up in, uh, in episode three of season three. He has a new, uh, a, a, a new love interest. Um, uh, who we will save. We won't reveal that. Okay. One. All right. But uh, yeah, he's he's well adjusted. Now you're also incorporating the Court of Owls, which oh, is sort yeah. of this you know very you know hallowed sort of deep underground thing. Like, how do you approach that? Are you taking it seriously, or are you <laughs> having fun with it, or apparently not? We're having a lot of fun <laughs> fun with it because to us, the Court of Owls always seemed like an eyes wide shut. Okay. So yeah. that's the direction you take yeah. it. That was a f party. That's what Kubrick wrote in the script. It's it's called that. Yeah. That's the that's yeah. what he the called original it. title of it was f party. That's what Kubrick wanted. He fought for it, <laughs> but he didn't have enough juice at that time. It was Stanley to Kubrick's get it. F party. Yeah. Okay. If he had made it right after The Shining, it would have been f party. But all of that distance, he loses some of the juice. He can't do it. Fair enough. I, I love it. I'm into it. I want to see. I really want to see this version of Court of Owls. Is, is this going to be like a, a recurring theme, or is they, are they kind of like a Monster of the Week approach? A little bit Monster of the Week. Any other any other stuff you want to tease? Just vague stuff you want to allude to? Any any? I mean, we're always trying to like just drag top secret NDA stuff out of people on. <laughs> <No. bar. laughs> uh, I, I will tease that. Um, I think the villain this year, the main antagonist this year, the big bad, is uh, unexpected. Uh, people are going to find out about midway through the season. Uh, who is uh, who is behind it? Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited for people to see that because I think it's something that hasn't been done in in the history of DC. So awesome! That. Well, I'm I'm glad you guys are allowed to do all sorts of crazy stuff, and you're clearly still having plenty of fun with it. Harley Quinn season three premieres next Thursday, July 28th, exclusively on HBO Max. So if you're not caught up, you've got a week to binge the first two seasons. But first, hang tight for more San Diego Comic Con 2022 live on IGN.